A prime number is any integer greater than 1 whose only divisors are 1 and itself. As we continue to look for more and more prime numbers, they become scarcer and scarcer. As a result, a good question to ask would be, are there an infinite amount of prime numbers? Well, it certainly appears this way. As of July 2012, when I made this video, the largest known prime number is 2 raised to the 43,112,609 minus 1. If we tried to comprehend this number by, say, taking this many steps between the Earth and the Moon, we would walk from the Earth to the Moon and back a certain number of times This just as incomprehensibly large. Put it this way, it has almost 13 million digits. That makes it pretty big. Even though we're fairly sure primes continue forever, we're not entirely sure. Maybe that prime is the last one. After all, no one's ever come up with a method to generate prime numbers. What we need is a rigorous proof to argue that there must be an infinite amount of prime numbers without actually having to generate them. Euclid was the one who came up with the most well-known proof that there are infinitely many primes. His proof is considered to be one of the most elegant proofs ever written for any theorem. A famous mathematician, Paul Erdős, used to say that God kept a book of the most beautiful and elegant theorems, and that Euclid's proof was certainly in that book. So here's Euclid's proof that there are infinitely many prime numbers. Obviously, there's either a finite amount or an infinite amount. If there's an infinite amount, we're done. So assume that there are only a finite amount of prime numbers. Then consider this quantity. A equals the product of all the known primes plus 1. Then you could ask, what divides evenly into A? Well, we know 2 does not divide evenly into A because A is not a multiple of 2. It would leave a remainder of 1 if we divided 2 into A. In the same way, 3, 5, 7, and every other prime number up to and including P does not divide evenly because it would leave a remainder of 1. This leaves only two options. Number one, either A is prime since it has no other factors other than one and itself, or two, A could be composite, but its prime factors would not be in our original list. Either way, we've shown that there has to be at least one more prime number, let's call it Q, that's not in our original list. Now if we claim this is the true, complete, finite list of primes, let's repeat the process, and we'll get another prime. Done repeatedly, this proves there are an infinite amount of prime numbers. Euclid was a pretty smart guy.